Feel the power. Welcome to Righteous Invasion of Truth with Dr. Abel Damina. Welcome to the most exciting event on television, Riot, Righteous Invasion of Truth, presented by the Power Broadcasting Network, Abel. Damina is my name. I want to welcome you to the broadcast today. Hey, listen, listen, it's going to be an exciting broadcast. The Word of God is going to come with power and accuracy. You want to grab your pen, your notebook, and your Bible and get ready for the teaching of God's Word. Then one more thing, share the video. Get somebody to hook up to this broadcast. This will change the person's life. Then one more thing, remember that I have books I have written and the latest of the books is Every Man a Minister. You want to order for a copy of that book. It will change your life. The details to order are on the screen right now. Listen carefully. If you live in a place where there's no Christ-centered church to attend, we have our campuses all over the world. Today, if you call any of the numbers on the screen right here, right now, these are all our regional coordinators. They'll be willing to identify with you and help you connect with a campus. Our churches are called campuses, a campus closest to where you are. Or you've been following me for a long time and you live in a place where there's no Christ-centered church and you want to start a campus. We're willing to train you, equip you, and bring you revelation knowledge that will make you fit to start a campus and help other people to come to the knowledge of the truth where you yourself can become a lighthouse in your community. If that's what you're interested in, call our numbers today or send a mail to Dr. Abel Damina at yahoo.com. We'll be willing to engage with you and train you and get you to become a lighthouse in your community for the spread of the gospel. It's going to be an exciting service today. I'm telling you, the power of God, the word of God is going to build you up and equip you. And I look forward to seeing you at the end of the broadcast, fasting your seatbelts as I take you on a gospel adventure into that service where the spirit of our God is already moving. Happy viewing. All right, let's get into this thing. 100% answers to prayers guaranteed. The book of Genesis 1 26 and God said let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth so God created man in his own image in the image of God created he him male and female created he them and god blessed them and god said unto them be fruitful he said let them have dominion then when he gave them dominion he now said you you have the dominion now be fruitful that's the wisdom of god and the plan of god in creation be fruitful multiply and replenish the earth and you subdue it don't ask me to subdue it for you you subdue it i give you dominion over the earth i'm teaching here you subdue it subdue the earth and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth that's the wisdom of God in creation and the plan of God for creation. Let them have dominion over. Somebody say very loud, I have dominion over the earth. Say it again very loud, I have dominion over the earth. I didn't hear a living amen. Let them have dominion. We established that the earth was so made that it will respond to man. It was so made that it will respond to man. There is nothing a man is praying about that is in heaven. If it's money you're praying about is here. If it's a wife, she's here. If it's a husband, he is here. If it's children, they are here. If it's a visa you're praying for, it's here. If it's a house, it's here. If this land is here. If this connection you're praying for, it's here. Hello. There's nothing a man is praying for that is in heaven. 
because nothing comes from heaven from the creation of the world after genesis nothing has come from heaven to earth nothing only one thing came from heaven to earth the holy spirit the spirit of god that's all nothing else not even the rain not even the rain the rain comes as a result of sweat from man creates clouds in the atmosphere and rains back on man so it's not about open windows of heaven and non-open windows of heaven no 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 the rain comes not from heaven it comes from man the only thing that is not in the earth is spiritual things spiritual things are not in the earth because spiritual things are not physical and even then spiritual things are in the earth ephesians 1 3 blessed be the god and father of our lord jesus christ who had blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenlies in heavenlies spiritual blessings are in heavenlies and the heavenlies are in christ and christ is in you so even the spiritual things are here now let me tell you one more god himself is here god himself didn't he say in his word i will walk in them i will live in them they will be my sons and i will be their father so if he's in you where are you talk to me citizens where are you now if he's in you it means he is where he is on earth god himself is on earth so that's why i said to you prayers are not answered in heaven prayers are answered here you know it's just lack of proper bible teaching that even makes people when they pray they lift their eyes to heaven because actually you shouldn't be looking up when you are praying you should be looking inside he lives here where is he i will live in them he lives here so he, you shouldn't be looking hey you know the disciples when they had jesus teaching the kingdom in the gospels they came out and began to look up and they were looking for the kingdom they were waiting for the kingdom to come because jesus said repent for the kingdom is at hand so they thought there was a kingdom coming out of heaven and as they were looking jesus said to them the kingdom does not come by observation you don't look around for the kingdom the kingdom is inside you Help doesn't come from above. Help comes from within. Praise God. The Old Testament people thought help came from above because they didn't know what you know. The mystery that has been kept from ages, from generations, but now is made manifest to his saints. They didn't have it. We have it so we can function like them because we know what they didn't know praise god are you getting blessed yeah nothing comes from heaven that changes everything about prayer it changes your concept it just changes everything at once gives you a whole brand new world amen so the blessings are here everything is here you know the impression people have is that the devil is somewhere in the sky you know they have this impression that satan is somewhere in the sky and when you're praying because god is somewhere in heaven you have to pray and clear satan in the sky to get to heaven that is a, it's a messed up mindset the devil is not in the sky the devil is not in the sky and i have told you that the devil has never been to hell before because hellfire is reserved it's reserved for the day of judgment god has not judged the devil yet because there is a day of judgment when he will be judged with all his demons alongside with those that reject christ and when they are all judged they will be thrown in hell so where is the devil jesus gave us a clear picture of where the devil is he goes about like a roaring lion he is in the ministry of going about seeking whom he may devour he does not devour 
everybody he has to seek for who he has to seek for that means everybody is not devourable he has to seek for he and you must know that the devil is localized he is localized he cannot be everywhere because he's not omnipresent he is localized he is one entity and can only be in one place at one time he's localized honey do you know that is why when they took jesus to egypt as idol worship as egypt was satan was in there god looked around and saw where satan will not be to go and keep jesus in safety and he discovered that satan was parambulating everywhere else minus egypt so he sent jesus to egypt so when i go around and i see christians everywhere calling satan it's illiteracy he can't be everywhere satan is local it's only god that is everywhere at the same time because he's omnipresent hello here are you hearing what I'm saying here? Luke chapter 9 verse 1. And he called the 12 disciples together and gave them power and authority over all devils and to cure diseases. Who did he give power and authority to? To man. He gave power and authority to man to deal with all devils and cure all diseases. He gave it to man. He gave all authority and power to man. He gave it to the disciples, man, to, to deal with all devils and to cure all diseases. All, to cure all diseases. He didn't say, man, ask me. He said, take, go and do it when i give you something to go and do you don't come to me to do it for you you do it and come back with a report he gave them to go cast deal with all devils cure diseases i'm teaching here he gave it to man this is jesus in his earthly walk he gave all authority all dominion to man amen Jesus speaking in Luke chapter 5 verse 24. But that you may know that the son of man had power upon earth to forgive sins. He said unto the sick of the palsy, I say unto thee, arise and take up the couch and go into thy house. He has power both to forgive sins and to heal. The son of man has that power upon the earth. Upon the earth. Luke chapter 10 verse 17. And the 70 returned again with joy saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. The devils are subject to man. They are subject to us. These were men speaking. The devils are subject to us through your name. The devils are subject to us. Amen after redemption these are the things that man exercised matthew 28 18 and jesus came and spoke unto them saying all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth man jesus was not speaking here as god he was speaking here as man because if he was speaking as god nobody gives to god nobody gives to god power it is god that owns all power once was he spoken twice have i heard that power belongs so nobody gives to him he owns it so when jesus said all power is given to me he was speaking as man so man has all power in heaven and on earth the man in christ the man in christ has all power how many power all 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 power is given to me in heaven and on earth or in earth this was after redemption can we say that a man controls heaven 
Huh? Huh? Can we say that a man controls heaven? We are still trying to establish why we pray. We are not praying to inform God. Prayer is not informing God because God already knows. Your heavenly father knows. He already knows. So we are not praying to inform him. He is well informed. In fact, more informed than we can inform him. Because even our language of expression is inadequate. So he knows. Praise God. So prayer is not informing God because God already knows. Secondly, we also said we are not praying to convince God because he is liberal. He is liberal. He operates not. He gives liberally. He is liberal. The word liberal means generous. He gives even without asking. So he doesn't need conviction. And then he knows. So that settles it. Number one, he knows. Number two, he is generous. So we don't need to convince him. Say with me, I do not pray to inform God. And I do not pray to convince God. He already knows. And he is generous towards me. I didn't hear your amen. Matthew 16, 17. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Bajona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. Next verse. And I say also unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatsoever thou shalt bind where? On earth shall be bound where? In heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt lose where? On earth shall be lose where? Heaven is determined by what man does where? On earth. What I do here determines what happens there. That word bind is not like using a rope to tie something. Now that's not what it means. And I'm going to interpret that very shortly. Because many people think it's to tie something with a rope. So you see a church praying. You hear in the same prayer people are saying I bind somebody saying I lose. So there's confusion. The same prayer point. Some are binding the same prayer point. Some are losing the same prayer point. Mass confusion. And that's why teaching is important so that we can all come to the knowledge of the truth. So we can all function in the truth. Even as he is in the truth. We bind here and heaven confirms it. We lose here, heaven confirms it. The word kingdom, I give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, is the word basilia. It means authority of heaven. So let me ask you another question. Did he give to man the authority of heaven? Does man rule over heaven now? Huh? Are you sure? The word bind is a Greek word, D-E-O, D-O. It means to prohibit. When we say you should bind, what we are saying is you should prohibit or you should disallow. When I say I bind you, what I'm saying is I disallow you or I prohibit you. That's the meaning of bind. D-E-O, D-O. To prohibit or to disallow. Because the authority is, I say to one, go. He goes, I say to one, come, he comes. I forbid one and I allow one. Follow me carefully, I'm going somewhere. The word loose is the word L-U-O, low. It is used for release of prisoners. Jesus applied those same words in Matthew 18, 15, where he was dealing with brethren in church and offenses. Moreover, if thy brother shall trespass against thee, go and tell him his fault between thee and him alone. Church people don't hear because they have disregard for the word of God. That's the bottom line. Otherwise, the word of God gives you directions on how to resolve issues. 
because this is a family he said if thy brother shall trespass against you go and tell him his fault between you and him alone but you know church people they will tell everybody minus the person you have no regard for the word of god you already showed that the word of god does not rule your life and you're just pretending you're actually acting beside yourself this is jesus himself the master teaching he said go to him tell him between two of you alone because it will be easy for two of you to handle each other and it will be easy to forget and forgive when there are third parties they will put fertilizer then if the fertilizer is not catching they will apply pepper cameroon pepper cameroon cameroon you're watching cameroon pepper the type that when you eat it you'll be doing as if you are praying because the thing is extra hot and if the pepper is not catching they will put a salt inside because once a third party gets involved it becomes more complicated how many of you know a third party story must have an improvement yeah it's called improved version <laughs> that's why jesus said you go to him two of you alone because if i just walk to you and i say brother please 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 i need to fix something with you one two three i don't like the way you did it it will be easy for him to say i'm sorry or this is why i did it but once you put somebody there ego comes in ego kicks in and once there's ego in a situation you can't solve that problem it will start complicating itself that's why jesus said go to him alone two of you obey the word of god and live a healthy life if he shall hear thee thou hast gained because the mission is not to disgrace him he has done something to you that annoys you but he is your brother so you owe him the responsibility of winning him of gaining him of getting him to see his fault and fix it so he can be better for it it's to gain him the mission of going to him is to gain him not to scandalize him not to destroy him not to make life difficult for him how many of you know you can make life difficult for somebody because by the time you talk to three four five people and the person begins to hear different versions of that story around town or within the church the person is in church but uncomfortable because the person doesn't know what all of you are thinking about him which may not be correct you have put that brother in a difficult situation and that is why jesus is giving us directions on how to fix things but if he will not hear thee then take with thee one or two more that in the mouth of two or three witnesses every word may be established so that there'll be nobody saying this is not what i said this is what i said there'll be witnesses to witness to what who said what and who didn't say what are we together here and if he shall neglect to hear thee tell it unto the church tell it unto the church doesn't mean you should come out and say i have a testimony then you collect the microphone praise the lord now i have the microphone you see that brother the bible says i should tell the church i'm telling all of you now no that's not what it means to tell the church to tell the church means you go to the authority of the church you go to the authority of the church you go to the authority of the church but if he neglect to hear the church let him be unto thee as a hidden man and a publican let the church treat him as an unbeliever then look at the next verse you will love the next verse. verily i say unto you whatsoever you shall bind on earth whatsoever you shall disallow or prohibit whatever the church will disallow or prohibit shall be disallowed or prohibited in heaven earth controls heaven I'm teaching here all right and whatsoever you shall lose allow or release on earth shall be loosed in heaven next verse again i say unto you 
that the two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask it shall be done for them of my father which is in heaven as it relates the brother this is not prayer of agreement this is dealing with a brother's condition it's not prayer of agreement let's join hand let's tie hand let's tie hand no when you start thinking like that you're thinking carnal we can tie hand and our hearts are fighting is it true i can hold your hand but inside my heart i'm fighting you so he wasn't dealing with prayer in this verse he was dealing with the brother that will refuse to hear the church then the church can agree that this brother we are going to treat him as an unbeliever and when we agree like that it is done so um, from these scriptures we see clearly that earth controls the heaven somebody shout i hear you i say somebody shout i hear you uh -huh. So what did Jesus say we should do with the brother? Because I need to clarify something quickly. Jesus didn't say we shouldn't forgive the brother. That's not what he's saying here. Because in the next verse there, he began to talk about forgiveness. You know, down, down. He began to contextually. So what, what Jesus was saying is, forgive him. When you forgive him, then treat him as an unbeliever. But for forgiveness, you can't but forgive him. You forgive him, but then you treat him as an unbeliever. Because there will be no justification in you not forgiving him and holding him captive. No, you let him go, you forgive him, but then you treat him as an unbeliever. Amen? Somebody shout, I hear you. I say, somebody shout, I hear you. Because in verse 20, Jesus begins to talk about forgiveness. Put it up, 18. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. Verse 21. Then came Peter to him and said, Lord, how oft shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? Till seven times. Jesus said unto him, I say not unto thee until seven times, but until seventy times seven. Jesus is teaching that no matter what the situation was, no matter what the brother did, you will, you will treat him as an unbeliever, but first of all, forgive him. Forgive him. Release him. Amen? Somebody say, I hear. Yeah. He said, even if he has done it 70 times 7, forgive him. He also was teaching forgiveness along with the teaching of how to handle trespasses and, and people going against you in the house of the Lord. Praise the Lord. I say praise the Lord. Bottom line, whatever earth decides, heaven responds to. Are we together? So prayer, therefore, is not heaven focused. Prayer is not heaven focused. Prayer will not move heaven to earth. It doesn't mean that we control God, but God deliberately, intentionally, and purposely gave the control of heaven to us let them have dominion and he has not changed it till date that's why when jesus rose he said all power is given to me in heaven on earth okay somebody say i hear you i'm going to get there but you know i could just give you this uh, so that you can it can help you a little bit and then he now turned and said god has highly exalted him and given him a name that is above every name at the name of jesus every knee must bow of things where in heaven on earth and under the earth then he said now i give you my name by the use of his name you now have authority in heaven on earth and under the earth so it is not in the hand of god to answer your prayer he has answered all prayer He has answered all prayers for your heavenly father knows you have need and he will give liberally. 
generously. Praise God. Are you understanding? Your heavenly father knows. And he's not stingy. He's not looking for attention. So nothing happens on earth outside man's authority. Nothing. Nothing happens on earth. That is why God became a man to bring salvation. Because nothing happens on earth outside man's authority. So if God is going to function in the earth and recover authority to man, he has to come as man because outside man, no authority on the earth. That's why God became a man so that he too can legally function in authority because authority over heaven and earth is given to who man is there man in this building if there's man can i hear you shout i am in authority here that's why god almighty wanted to save mankind wanted to bring salvation plan wanted to bring redemption to mankind so god said you know man still owns authority on earth so if i'm going to function on earth I have to put on an earth suit and be a man. Great is the mystery of godliness. That God is manifest in flesh. Why? Because the authority of a man is in flesh. Listen carefully. Look up, look up, look up, look up, look up. That is why Satan, Satan is an outlaw. You know why Satan is an outlaw? Because Satan does not have the jurisdiction to function here. Because he is not man. This planet is for man. That's why now the Bible says, anywhere you find Satan, cast him out. Why? Because he is an alien. A batola. He doesn't have the earth suit. Hear me. He doesn't have what? The earth suit to function. If God has to wear flesh to be here, for God to function here, then who is Satan to function here without an earth suit? God needs an earth suit. God couldn't have come as God. You know why? God is a spirit. If he has come as God, we will cast him out and he will be out. So since he really wants to carry out his assignment, he himself submitted himself to the plan and to the principle that governs the earth. So what did he do? He humbled himself, entered the womb of a woman for nine months. Then they gave birth to him. Then he came out with flesh, grew like a baby. All of that was to establish his authority so he can function here in authority. I'm teaching good here tonight. Satan doesn't have that. So even with the Adamic status, that satan is functioning he can do nothing absolutely nothing somebody say nothing, nothing. shout it loud nothing. louder nothing. he's hearing you loudest nothing. he can do nothing till he finds a man that opens up to him then he enters the man and uses the body of the man as his legality to carry out his wicked plan Otherwise, if no man gives Satan himself, then Satan can only roam around without impact. All right, I said that because I'm going to somewhere very powerful now. The entire plan of redemption had to be carried out through a man. Because the authority on earth is bestowed on man. John 5, 22. For the father judged no man but had committed all judgment unto who the son why because the son is a man authority i'm teaching here yeah the son is a man authority the father judged no man he has come because you have to have authority to judge that all men should honor the son even as they honor the father he that honoreth not the son Honor it not the father which has sent him. How can you be saying, Father, I honor you, and you disregard Jesus? Who is Father and who is Jesus?
Jesus is the father. And Jesus is the father manifest. So how can you say you love God whom you do not see and do not love the man Jesus whom you see? Oh, now, now. I'm interpreting that verse for you now. We see Jesus. Glory to God. Somebody wave your hands. Give Jesus a salute with a shout. Amen. <laughs> All judgments are committed to the son. 1 Corinthians 15, 24. Then come at the end when he shall have delivered up the kingdom to God. Even the father. When he shall have put down all rule and all authority and power. For he must reign till he had put all enemies under his feet. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. For he had put all things under his feet. But when he saith all things are put under him, it is manifest that he is accepted which did put all things under him and when all things shall be subdued under him then shall the son also himself be subject unto him that put all things under him that god may be all in all even the father so it seems to me by the implication of that verse like this earth is on a lease there's a lease agreement how many of you know what a lease is when you lease a property for 10 years so it seems like this earth is on a lease and eventually the lease will expire then it will be handed back to the owner remember i told you yesterday the earth is the lord's but he has given it to man did I say that? So who owns the earth? God. He still owns it till now. But the management of the earth has been leased. It has been for he had put all things under his feet. But when he saith all things are put under him, it is manifest that he himself is accepted. Which did put all things under him. That is to say, God is not among the things that are put under Jesus. So the only thing that man doesn't have authority over is God. But anything outside God has been put under the authority of man. Including heaven, including earth, including angels. They are all put under the authority of man minus God. I'm teaching here. Next verse. And when all things shall be subdued under him, then shall the son also himself be subject unto him so a day will come from what i am reading now and from what i'm seeing in scripture when jesus also will cease to be a man and the only thing that will be is god so that means that office of jesus as a man it is for men he doesn't need to be a man if not for you, he became a man for you so he can with you. But when all of God's plan according to how it was in Genesis 1, 26, 27 and 28 is fulfilled, there will be no need for Jesus to continue to be a man because all of us will have come into a place where we are absolutely in charge then Jesus will cease to be a son and disappear into the God that he is. I don't know if I just said something here. If you're hearing, shout, I hear you. Now, <laughs> we will get into that teaching eventually, but I just gave you that, you know, by the side, like a side dish. Why will that happen? That God may be all and no more the son now god that means it will be back to the way it was oh that means eventually what god wanted he will have it the way he wanted it praise god hallelujah who is in authority here right now if you are the one shout i am in authority here 
I didn't hear your amen. amen. So everybody say everything minus God is under my authority because I am the man in Christ. I didn't hear your amen. amen. So now take note. Everything is under man except God, including angels. Everything. Secondly, man wills so much in the earth such that nothing happens in the earth outside man. First Corinthians 2 6. Habit, we speak wisdom among them that are perfect, yet not the wisdom of this world, nor of the prince of this world that come to north. But we speak the wisdom of God in what? A mystery, even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory. Now carefully look at verse 8. Which none of the princes of this world knew. For had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. The princes of this world is talking about the rulers of this world. The rulers. He's not talking of Satan here. He's talking about human governmental authorities. They are called princes. He said if men in authority knew what the death of Christ would have brought, they would have denied God his way. They will have hindered the plan of God. They will have obstructed redemption. So when God knew that man will not cooperate for redemption, he made sure he took man by surprise in the area where man is ignorant. So because man didn't know, then man went to advance the purpose of God. Man allowed himself to be used by Satan to carry out the purpose of God in the killing of Christ. And by that death, that man was instrumental in helping to bring to pass that death was the disarming of satan if they have refused to crucify there'll be no redemption i'm teaching here so if man knew man will have stopped the plan that's how authoritative man is so god said i know what to do i will make sure they do not understand what is happening i will make it a mystery so Man advanced his purpose and helped to fulfill his will on the earth. Praise the Lord. I'm teaching here. I know somebody says, so how does all this translate to our prayers? Don't worry, just be coming. <laughs> Praise God. So, you know what, honey? Man's ignorance is authority in itself. The ignorance of man is authority. Because it was the ignorance of man that gave authority to redemption. You know what I mean? It's because he didn't know that he used this authority in ignorance to advance redemption. So whether you know or you don't know, since you are in authority, you, your authority is used both in knowledge and in ignorance. How many of you understand what I'm saying? It's like your office staff write a letter and came and gave you and you didn't read and you signed that you didn't read doesn't mean your signature is invalid because you signed whether you read or you didn't read that you put your signature your authority is behind that letter even if the letter is insulting the president and you will be arrested for it when you cannot tell i don't know ignorance does not come into this issue so that is why by your ignorance sometimes you license satan to kill you because whether you know or not, authority is being executed. So that's why my people are destroyed. Exactly. Now you're talking to me. <laughs> Lift your right hand shout. I am in authority here. <laughs> Say my authority affects heaven. So I must be careful how I exercise my authority here. I didn't hear your amen. I'm in authority. Thank you, Lord. I say thank you, Lord. I say thank you, Lord. So God chances man in the area of knowledge. You know why? Because knowledge affects the use of authority. Knowledge. Knowledge affects 
the use of authority do you know solomon put it like this a man that is in honor and knoweth not is like the beast see that he's in honor but he doesn't know so he he is in the class of animals he's like a perishing beast not even a good animal not even a good animal the one that is perishing a man in honor a man in authority who does not know solomon calls it like this an evil under the sun as an arrow that proceeded from the ruler princes are walking on foot servants are riding on horses it's an arrow and it is that arrow is coming from the ruler because the ruler does not know he gave out his authority ignorantly to his enemy to use in messing him up but it ends tonight i say it ends tonight i say it ends tonight bojatala mahoga rokotoke mola monengege the earth is man's and knowledge affects the use of authority that is what satan meant now look four five and six and the devil taking him up into a high mountain showed unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time and the devil said unto him all this power will i give thee and the glory of them for that is delivered unto me and to whomsoever i will i give it do you know what satan was talking about here the kingdoms of this world and the authority of this world that satan was talking about here he was talking about the heart of man the heart satan was saying i own the hearts of men all humans have given me their heart and because i own their heart i control the world that's what satan was saying to jesus i own the hearts of men I own their heart. They have willingly given me their heart. So I can sit in their hearts and use their bodies to carry out my functions. So the authority of the world is in my hand. Do you understand? Yeah, I was talking about the heart of men. So the authority is not the office or the car. It's the heart. So Satan is saying to Jesus, I own the hearts of men. And I'm going to feel that was true. That was true. That's why Jeremiah saw into the hearts of men and said, the heart is desperately wicked. Jeremiah saw into the heart. Why is he wicked? Because of the person inside it. Who is inside the heart? The wicked one. When the wicked one is inside the heart of a man, it makes the man wicked. I'm teaching here. Yeah. Deceitful. Desperately wicked. Deceitful. Because the deceiver the evil one satan is inside and wherever the deceitful one is there will be deceit that's what jeremiah saw the hearts of men ah, this is heavy the hearts of men so what satan was saying to jesus is if you kneel down and worship me i will withdraw from the hearts of men so that you can also have some that's what satan was saying to jesus if you worship me now i will withdraw out of some of their heart and let you also share the authority along with me so jesus looked at satan and said there's a better way to get it i don't have to worship you there's a better way to get it and i'm going to get it hallelujah i don't have to kneel down and serve you satan you are too small you are the one to serve me I'm going to contest with you and I will defeat you and I will collect their hearts back by conquest. And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a public show of the devil. But follow me carefully because I'm going somewhere. Just give me a few more minutes. Are you getting blessed tonight? Hey, see Bible. The heart of man and the mouth of man rules the earth or dictates the affairs of the earth. Remember what the centurion said to Jesus. 
Remember very cl clearly. You don't have to come to my house. Uh -uh. Don't bother yourself. I am a man under authority. And I know how authority works. Speak. That thing that is in your heart. Speak it. And it doesn't matter where my son is. Your authority spans the universe. Hey. I'm teaching here. Jesus said, hey, I've not seen this kind of faith. He called that knowledge faith. Did, are you following me? What did he call faith? Knowledge. knowledge. He called that knowledge faith. I've not seen this kind of faith. Not even in Israel. That is, this guy has an understanding that makes faith work. Yeah. He has a knowledge that makes faith work. What is that knowledge? I don't have to come to your office to bless it. As I stand on this pulpit and I speak what is in my heart over you as your spiritual authority in this local house wherever you are hearing the sound of my voice and where you need that miracle as i speak the word here it is happening there you are blessed you are blessed now look 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 the understanding of the authority makes the authority works much more much more than a lack of understanding if that centurion did not understand authority he wouldn't have got anything from jesus but because the man understood authority he said hey master don't even bother coming to my house i know how authority works and you are a man in authority i also have soldiers under me i said to some come i don't go to tell them come i stay from where i am and i say come and they come go and they go jesus healing is under your authority so if you speak healing will travel to wherever you have sent it and carry out whatever you want it to carry out so speak the word only jesus say hey, hey, hey. right now your servant is well bam healing entered the servant and made him whole i'm speaking to somebody here say the heart the mouth i'm a man under authority i know how authority works i said to one come he comes i said to one go he goes you don't have to come men in authority don't have to come speak the word only Listen very carefully. Whatever is under you will respond to what you say. You didn't hear me. Whatever is under you will respond to what you say. So now the question is, you need to answer what is under you. Hey, hey, city, are you in the house? What is under you? What has God put under man? All things. So, what battle? What is your span of authority? All things. So, what do you do to get all things to answer you? Speak. The power is in your mouth. He didn't say, ask me. He said, speak. He didn't say, take permission from me. He said, The righteousness of faith speaketh on this wise. Say not in your heart. The world is not. It's in your heart and in your mouth. That is the word of faith which we preach. Somebody say from today, no more unanswered prayers in my life. Why? 
<laughs> what was under Jesus? Healing and forgiveness. So what did he do? He looks at a man and says, Son, your sins are forgiven you. Bam. And he said, Who is he to forgive sins? He said, That you may know that the Son of Man has power to forgive sin and to heal. I do not only forgive him his sin. Son, carry your mat, get out of here. A cripple stood up instant without sweating and flexing muscles just by the speech of a man that knows his authority. Who told you, you have to clap your hand and shake your head before your prayers are answered? You just speak. Prayer is, you don't have to kneel down. You don't have to lie down. Uh -uh. Once your heart believes it, you speak it, you see it. Jesus saw a tree in Mark 11. And he said, tree, no man eat fruit of thee. He walked away. He didn't shout. He just said, three. He, he's a man in authority. He knows authority. A master that will come out of his limousine to be fighting gate man. I'm telling you, he needs psychiatric attention. Right, right. So I'm serious. How can a master with a limb, you are the boss, you employ this boy and you're fighting the boy. Who is in charge? All you need to do is look at the gate man and say, you Put your things in the box and get ready. You call your office and tell your office, get him out of that gate and put somebody else and see to it that all the properties of the house are handed over before his exit. I don't want to see him when I'm back in two hours. All right? All right, take care of yourself. That's a man in authority. A man in authority does not shout. When you see somebody shouting, he has lost authority. Do you understand? A mother that has subdued her children under effective authority does not talk. She will just look at them. There's a way she will do her eye. Those of us that know our authority, we don't have to shout for Satan. The moment we come at our body language, Satan has already understood what we are talking I feel like I'm talking to someone. If you hear what I'm saying, stand on your feet, shout yes. Tell your neighbor, I am in authority here. I'm teaching here. If you're understanding, shout, I hear you. I prophesy over you tonight. Wherever you're hearing the sound of my voice, everything the death of Christ has provided for you is released to you now. It's released to you now. Your health is released. Your finances are released. Your career is released. Your job is released. Your business is released. By the power of the Holy Ghost, by the finished work of Christ, by the finished work of Christ, by the righteousness of faith, I speak over you tonight. What took others 10 years to get, yours will be done in 30 days. It will be done in 30 days. I speak to this planet, I speak to the earth to answer to you and give you good things. I command favor to come out of this planet. Receive supply, receive supply, receive supply. Receive supply. Receive supply. Receive supply. Receive supply. Membro takole bo de gebo yo no gamone gemo lana mano ho ho ho. Hey, hola bo jaka, hola bo reketena gaga. Hele bo roso kelene moha. Egeya no. Praise you, Father. Holo bo jekelene mohos. Praise you, Father. Lift your hands and give him praise and glory. Elebo shokoro do gobo sotele de boho. Mambra nangro tekele ne mohoda. Go ahead, give him praise, give him praise. Give him praise, give him praise. Elebo shekere de kebo sota. Membra nangre ketene geboja. Elebo shekele ne moho. Ay, 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 ay. It is done. And from today, I declare over you, you will go around this planet exercising your authority. Thank you, Lord. You are a believer. You don't have to try to believe. You are what? That's who you are. 
a believer does not try to believe because he is a believer that's who you are so because you believe that's why you are a believer and because you are a believer all things are possible you know why all things are possible because you are in authority here amen so i declare the day of impossibilities is over in your life welcome to a world of total possibilities 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 somebody's not shouting that amen well then go ahead celebrate your possibilities give praise and rejoice 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 welcome back ladies and gentlemen welcome back i believe you've been affected impacted touched by jesus christ i believe that god's word has built you up i want to pray for you today father i rebuke sickness disease i rebuke the oppression of the enemy satan get your hands off of god's property and i release god's miracle upon your life right now receive that miracle receive it now be healed in your body receive favor receive direction receive solution receive answers in jesus name amen praise god listen carefully if you live in a place where there's no christ-centered church to attend we have our campuses all over the world today if you call any of the numbers on the screen right here right now these are all our regional coordinators they'll be willing to identify with you and help you connect with a campus our churches are called campuses a campus closest to where you are or you've been following me for a long time and you live in a place where there's no christ-centered church and you want to start a campus we're willing to train you equip you and bring you revelation knowledge that will make you fit to start a campus and help other people to come to the knowledge of the truth where you yourself can become a lighthouse in your community if that's what you're interested in call our numbers today or send a mail to dr abel damina at yahoo.com we'll be willing to engage with you and train you and get you to become a lighthouse in your community for the spread of the gospel then one more thing, remember that I have books I have written and the latest of the books is Every Man a Minister. You want to order for a copy of that book, it will change your life. The details to order are on the screen right now. Remember, we're live here every day at 12 noon and 6 p.m. GMT plus one. God's word keeps coming. Brother Paul says, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and give you your inheritance among the sanctified. Looking forward to seeing you in the next broadcast. And until then, enjoy the grace of Christ and be blessed. Amen.